All right, guys, welcome back to the kitchen. I know you're uh, you just in here with me for the cooking mead video, but uh, this is where the agar magic happens. So, all right, guys. So whenever you're making your agar mix, whether that be for your culture slants or your petri dishes, I always try to make it at 500 milliliters at a time. I use 1,000 milliliter Earl wire flasks for that, and. Uh, what I tend to do is 10, uh, 10 grams agar agar, uh, 10 grams malt extract, and uh, uh, food coloring. If you want to, you know, color your agar, you can just make it plain if you want to. And then a gram each of soybean hull pellets and so uh, hardwood fuel pellets. And that makes my basic agar mix. You can change out. Uh, I mean, if for anything, it can be, uh, let's see, I've used coffee grounds, I've used leaves, I've used compost, I've used all kinds of things when making different agar mixes, depending on what species I'm using. Most species that we grow here for financial gain are, or at least for eating, we should say, they are wood lovers. So they love growing on wood. They're typically forest species that grow on dead trees and the like. So we tend to stick with our normal master's mix um, growth rate. You can just you know use wood in your culture slants like some people just put a little popsicle stick in there. Um, I actually did hear about Jay Schindler apparently uses he, uh, inoculates popsicle sticks and then uses those to inoculate his culture slants. I'm gonna give that a try. I really like that idea. So alright guys so what I tend to do is take my agar agar weigh out 10 grams put that into my Omar flask usually via a funnel and then I take my malt extract weigh out 10 grams put that in I then take a uh, measuring cup and I just fill it up with the hottest water I can get from the tap and that'll then I can fill up an Erlmeyer flask with 500 milliliters of hot water I'll take that 500 milliliters of hot water, I will have my food coloring sucked up into my syringe. I will pull water into that syringe and then push it back in to that flask to get the water colored. Then pour all that into where my um, agar agar and malt extract are already waiting. And then just weigh out a gram uh, each of hardwood fuel pellets and uh, soybean hull pellets and then drop those in. Take the flask, move it over. And I try to do all of my dries and then all of the wet. So that was, you know, describing a single flask. If I was going to do four flasks, let's say, I would go through, do agar agar in each, malt extract in each, my hardwood fuel pellets, my uh, soybean hull pellets. Then, where I've mixed up my colored water or just 500 milliliters of hot water, pour that into each one of those. Now I have four flasks of agar ready to go into the pressure cooker uh, after it's been capped off and I'll show you how to do that. So with that, once you have one flask and I try to mix it up by hand, you know, like I, like I was showing down in the lab, just shake it up by rotating your wrist a little, a little flick of the wrist. wrist. I'll then take polyfill, which you can buy at craft stores. I get mine from Walmart. Um, a huge or a small bag lasts me a huge amount of time. I take a polyfill and I'll wad up a bunch, stuff it down in the neck of the Erlmeyer flask, and then take some aluminum foil and coat the top or drape it over the, over the top and give it a little twist so that it'll hold on really well. Now that is ready to put into the pressure cooker and cook at 15 psi for I do mine 30 minutes. Some people do only do theirs for 15 minutes. I just do mine for 30 because it's worked really well. I don't have to think too much about it. I just set my 30 minute timer, walk away, and come back whenever the, the cooking's been done. So, uh, after that, I then wait until the pressure drops in my pressure cooker before carrying it downstairs, and then carry it down to the lab and let it finish cooling in front of the hood. It's actually better, if you can, to have it in front of your flow hood while it's cooling down, so that way as air is being drawn inside, um, it, uh, the cool air is being drawn inside, you're actually getting only clean air. But where it's capped off, I've never had a problem for years and years and years of doing agar work. I don't have dirty agar. A lot of people I know do open air pours in laboratory settings 
uh, where the laboratory is not a clean room. Uh, when I was in college, we used to <laughs> sterilize our agar uh, in in the microwave. So, you know, there's a hundred different ways to do it. This is just the way I do it, um, and not every way is as good as every other way. So maybe mine's not as good. Maybe you've got a way that works better. All right, guys. So first, we want to lay out our flasks, and then take my gram scale. I'll put a link down below for that. Close this stuff up. Do not let it get wet. It is incredibly hygroscopic. Great. Now we have the agar agar in there. You can take my malt extract and I buy this in bulk. I'll have a link for this down below as well. And now I'm just taking it to 20 grams. There we go. And I'll just repeat that for each flask. Now we take our handy dandy funnel dump our solids in, fit it on the next one, I'm glad that fridge cut off so I can actually, you guys can hear me better, hopefully, so there's a little over 10 grams of agar in there. Now I'm going to do my malt extract. And this stuff always smells really good. Alright, now we need to weigh out a gram of sawdust and a gram of soy sawdust and if it's a little over on the sawdust and soy I don't fret too much and soy alright so now I need to get water move all this out of our way and I'm just going to pour this until it comes up to the 500 milliliter mark oh yeah there we go and I'm gonna make a big mess apparently when I do it you guys make me nervous it's like having your boss watch you over your shoulder now here comes the fun part Today we're using teal food coloring. Link down below. I get all this stuff on Amazon. Now, let's see if I can get you guys to see. Yeah, right there. So I filled up the needle, and now I'm gonna take this, and we'll place that right in there. And now I'm gonna suck up the water. And this is the really fun part. Whoosh. There we go. And there we go. Pretty, pretty. Pour that in. And that's just the hottest water I could get from the tap. 10 grams Sagar, 10 grams soy, or 10 grams uh, malt extract. One gram soybean whole pellets and one gram hardwood fuel pellets. And I just try to mix it up and then let it sit. It will cool. It will cook and congeal. It will become entirely gelatin if you let it. Uh, we're going to put it in the pressure cooker before that. But sometimes I'll make it up and let it sit, you know. I, I try not to let it sit before it's cooked, but once it's cooked, I can let it sit in the uh, pressure cooker for days sometimes and then reheat it just to melt the agar and then pour whenever it's needed. 
So, let's do that again. And this time I'll see if I can get you guys a side view of what's going on. Here we go. Just close the food coloring back up. I wear gloves because you can see that gelatin stuff gets everywhere. Please don't judge me. I know it's Bomex, but this one's Pyrex. All right, now it's time for the polyfill. And with the polyfill, I'll just reach in, grab a good chunk, like so. You'll start, you'll develop a feel for it over time. But I just take it, wind it down a little bit, put it in there, and just stuff the neck full of that polyfill, leaving enough hanging out that you can use it as a handle to pull that back out. <laughs> this one keeps wanting to come out on me. There we go. Now, I take my Reynolds wrap, and I'll usually cut it down to size, like so. Make sure I've got a good square. That'll just wrap over the edge here like so. I'm gonna close it up around that lip and then give it a little twist to where it'll hang on there. Now it's time to load these into the pressure cooker and get them cooked. Make sure you clean up after yourself so it's easier afterwards. All right now, when you're opening a pressure cooker, take the weight off first, make sure there's no pressure. Then you turn your lid and open it. Now, I take my bottle or my flasks of agar and place them in the pressure cooker. And then I will take jars full of hot water and place them in. Just like so. So I'll place that in, that in, and then I'll place another one in. That way I've got as much thermal mass as possible to keep this from just cooling off really quick and cracking those flasks. Now you add the water. <clears throat> and I always just add water until the flasks start to float. Right there, when you see them float like that, I close my jars up around them, and that's okay to me if they lean. I've got no problem if they lean. I just don't want them floating and bobbing and everything else. I want to give them something to rest on and not let them go uh, crazy when the water starts to boil. Line everything up, close it. Now you're going to cook it for 15 PSI for 30 minutes, and then let it cool. And. Uh, Usually I'll let it cool for an hour and then pour if uh, I'm ready to do it right then. If not, then I will take this pressure cooker, let it cool overnight, and then put it on a hot plate and let it warm back up for about an hour. And then after the agar is melted, I can pour it then. All right guys, so now that um, we have our agar heating up in the pressure cooker, we're gonna let it cook, like I said, for 30 minutes at 15 PSI, and then let it cool for an hour and then after it's cooled, we can then pour it. If I don't have time to pour it tonight, I can let it rest overnight and warm, put it on a hot plate and warm it back up. Um, and I have found that to be very, very useful to be able to just warm it back up. I've seen a lot of people take the flask, take the aluminum foil off, and then put it in the microwave. Do not, do not microwave with aluminum foil on. I did that one time with a Wendy's burger and I left it just in the, I just put the whole bag, Wendy's bag in there. I forgot that Wendy's had that metallic wrapping. And next thing you know, poof, I had a big fire. This was when I was uh, in high school, probably a freshman. But uh, anyways, <clears throat> going back to what we were talking about, you can then warm it back up and then and then pour it, right? So after, after it's been poured, uh, you, you just follow the instructions like we had where you can rest it 
Um, I oftentimes will take three dishes, three to four dishes, and put them in a Ziploc bag. Ziploc bags are very clean, and I've had very little, if any, problems storing my sterile Petri dishes in a Ziploc bag for weeks, if not months at a time sometimes. So um, after that, you know, after they've been inoculated, I always parafilm the sides, but we'll go over that on an agar work episode. One of the future ones will be, you know, just uh, agar to agar transfers, which I've done before, but we'll do an agar to agar transfer and then we'll do a cleanup work uh, because I have some cultures that actually are in need of cleaning and I know some people have asked about that. So I will absolutely show you in the next couple of weeks how to clean up cultures and uh, use your water agar, use your malt extract agar, and use technique to help clean up a culture when, you, when it's in trouble of dying from a bacterial or yeast infection. So with that, guys, there's not really much more to this episode, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you found it useful. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. There'll be links for most of the products that we used in this episode down below as well in the description, so please check that out. Uh, otherwise, guys, check out the rest of our videos. Please give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, subscribe to that this or subscribe to that channel. Hit that subscribe button to subscribe to this channel. And as always, y'all, remember, keep spawning culture.